Well, the last time we talked to our forage system specialist, Dr. Alex Rocatelli, we were talking about prepping fields for interesting wheat into Bermuda. So Alex, you actually have some, uh, some forage trials out here right now of now that the wheat has already been interseeded and is coming up. So talk a little bit about what you have going on. So this is a research that I'm developing uh, that the main point here is to see how is the best system to extend forage production uh, on Bermuda grass pastures. So as you can see here, uh, I have different types of Bermuda grasses and in each one of them I split it on three different fields where in one third of the field we interseed the wheat and in the other one we stockpiled Bermuda grass and the other one, as I mentioned, is just a control where we harvest Bermuda grass for hay, we graze it during the summer, but during the fall and early springing we have that, I would say, as we can say, fallow. Nothing is happening. So Before we actually get into the weeds with this, um, why? what's the purpose or the benefit of interseeding wheat into Bermuda pastures? Well, first thing that I would say is less money putting out the hay, right? Rather than spend money or putting hay during the summer so you can have that for the winter, you can have your animal just harvesting uh, the wheat there or even harvesting the stockpile of the Bermuda grass. So I would say it will save money uh, on, on hay production. What are some things that producers need to consider when they're, you know, when they're actually putting the drills out and getting the seed into the ground? Yeah, so why do we use it here it was a no-till drill and from what I am experiencing here, that is essential. I mean, can you broadcast uh, the wheat and put your animal to graze the Bermuda grass in the end and hoofing uh, the seed in? Yes. Can you just use a conventional drill? Yes, you can. But uh, that might come as a result like uh, uh, interseeded wheat that is pretty much sparse. In some locations where your Bermuda grass turf was a little weak and there was open space with the soil, you may have some wheat coming, in other places not. Now when you have a no-till drill and the cutting disc can, heal, can really cut through the turf and you can place the seed about one inch, one inch and a half and after the closing wheels of the, the no-till drill can come and close that pretty okay, I mean you can have a good stand coming up and as you can see an even stand coming up. So you know as the study is going along what, what's your kind of ultimate goal for this? What, what do you want to give out to the producers? So my ultimate goal here is first to really find a system that work better on different locations here in Oklahoma. Perhaps in the eastern part of Oklahoma where we have more rainfall well, we can go wheat and after Bermuda grass and we won't have much impact on Bermuda grass production, right, during the, the summer. Now, when we start to go central to a little western Oklahoma, uh, this system may work better with a stockpiling Bermuda grass or with other small grains that in future are going to be uh, trying. So, my ultimate goal here is to find different systems that will fit in different locations here in Oklahoma. Alrighty, thanks Alex. Thank Dr. You. Alex Rocatelli, Forage System Specialist here at Oklahoma State University. And if you'd like some more information on interseeding wheat into Bermuda grass fields, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.